All right, welcome to another week of concept art. We'll also be rolling in design for the foreseeable future while Nelson works on some framework stuff. And so we'll start with an update there. Nelson, tell us what we got going on. We have a dashboard. Is it cool? It's all right. <laughs> um, you can see various performance counters, um, CPU usage, uh, garbage collection, CPU usage, messages in and out of the server um, per second, bytes in and out of the server per second, um, total memory usage, memory allocation per second, and then the large object heap size. Um, different photon performance counters for uh, slow uh, middle and uh, slow and middle operations operations that take a longer than a particular amount of time as well as the average amount of time to execute an operation uh, then we also have the amount of collections in gen 0 through gen 2 for the garbage collector uh, going into a zone we see all of the client or all of the actors uh, with their IDs their types and their names as well as how many moves they're making per second. Oh, very nice. Uh, you can also see clients. That's um, really impressive. Well, we can also see connected clients. Uh, we can see the amount of operations they have per second, events per second, their FPS, and their network latency. Uh, I'm going to actually quickly do um, something outside of what you guys can see. All right. We'll assume it's awesome. Oh, it's yeah, just high people's some... pings, the, you well, know, credit card details. <laughs> I, I just wanted to make sure I removed some profanity from some of my uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> debug messages. <laughs> to restart the client. It's a fine time to start that way, now. <laughs> by the way, a disclaimer for this particular episode, it is <laughs> rated R. <laughs> But, um, was it PG-13 these days? I don't know. Uh, it's always been X, hasn't it? <laughs> when you're involved, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'm going to do one more thing. Because uh, that's ugly. There we go. Alright, so we have this. Um, so if we look at the client, again, we can watch um, a bunch of stuff. And we can also see, as actually that just happened, um, we got a bunch of errors. So I can actually see on the dashboard all of the errors that are generated on the client. Um, I also have this button in here that just throws a random error. So. <laughs> stuff. Stuff happened. Yeah. Um, client, hey there, is uh, so sedate. <laughs> But, um, so yeah, you can watch uh, graphs of their operations per second and events per second, graphs of their FPS, graphs of their network latency, and the amount of bytes they are receiving for, uh, versus the amount of bytes that they are sending. So as I walk around, you'll notice I'm now sending about um, 400 bytes, 470 bytes per second, 500 bytes now per second. Um, so you can watch all that stuff. Also up here, we have a couple graphs for the zone itself. Um, we have the actor, the amount of actors and the amount of players. And we have this. This is uh, profiling information. It breaks the update, every update step down into three different steps. The update is the total amount of milliseconds it took to update. Uh, crowd is the total amount of milliseconds it took the crowd to update. Collisions for collisions and then actors for the AI. Uh, as you see, the um, collision spikes occasionally when actors uh, get added or removed, but is usually pretty good. The um, well, it could be a lot better. Honestly, I do a lot better than 10 to 15 milliseconds. Uh, the crowd is what's eating it mostly. As you see, the crowd simulation is pretty much taking most of the time it takes to simulate. You were thinking about putting that on a separate box anyway, weren't you? Uh, well, the way that's uh, well, what I'm wanting to do is first of all completely rewrite the crowd AI because it's just not very good. Um, 
and it's slow. Uh, then uh, I actually want to do like an actual behavior tree as opposed to just that stuff. But um, in addition, the way that the uh, servers are going to be working is that there'll be different region servers, and region servers will be re responsible for bits of a larger zone. So that's how I'm planning on doing handling that. Cool. Very nice. Well, that's come along very well in the last week. That is some impressive work, my friend. Well, I was out most week, most of the last week. <laughs> I was dead. Yeah, nearly dead. I would go into details, but I'm trying to keep this PG-13. <laughs> um, but next, uh, what I want to work on now is um, getting some interactivity with the dashboard. I want to be able to, basically for all of my actors, I want to be able to expose uh, interfaces that have methods on them that I'll be able to invoke from the dashboard itself so that I can actually control actors from this dashboard. Um, then do the same thing with clients, um, being able to control both their Unity client and their, the representation the server has of them um, from the dashboard as well so that I could do things like um, kill NATO repeatedly or you know, change somebody's name to something awful <laughs> um, from the dashboard. Basically, the dashboard is going to, uh, when I work on the next version of the framework, the dashboard is going to actually be its own client. It's basically going to be a client. And what I want to do is I want to have it to where there'll be an actual map, like a Google map style map where you can kind of pan around and see all the actors and um, click on them to do stuff so that the dashboard effectively becomes a moder moderator control panel or a GM control panel, um, as well as an administrator control panel for controlling the server and watching performance. Wow. OK. And then all the logging of all the errors and stuff is handled by a separate client, so the server doesn't overload logging errors. I assume that's part of the reason, at least. Well, the logging errors, I don't know what I'm going to do about um, the actual server log, server logs, like this stuff. Um, as you see, apparently, um, some entries don't exist um, for some reason. <laughs> OK. <laughs> wow. But um, so yeah, this stuff, uh, really, the fastest way to get this stuff down is to dump it into a file. So I don't know if I'm going to be replicating this information on the dashboard. Um, mm. Instead, just use log viewers because that would just add additional network overhead. Because the most frustrating thing about building this performance dashboard is building it in such a way that it doesn't actually destroy the performance of the thing I'm trying to measure. Yeah. Because there's a lot of um, there's just a lot of data being sent back and forth, and then. It has to be relayed um, to the browser in a way that doesn't overload the browser. So as you see, there's a lot of stuff that you you know you'd think, oh, that should be there, but I'm not going to do such as well persistence of information. For example, if I hop off this zone and then hop back into this zone, I don't have that error log anymore. Uh, nor do I have any historical information about you know the FPS or latency or anything like that. And I'm probably not going to add it because the overhead and the amount of data that would be required probably wouldn't be worth it. Very cool, sir. Not to mention you pretty fight it since last week. Did I show the dashboard last week, or did I show... I agree, well, I, guess, awesome. I guess it would have been the week before, but... Because I had class alone last week because you were dead. You got better. <laughs> so, now I can watch NATO, um, his latency be like 10,000. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As it goes, you're where? Seriously? <laughs> but 
I mean, we can set up NATO so that he's the host for the game overseas when the time comes. <laughs> we don't need to give NATO those kinds of advantages. <laughs> <laughs> well, very. Okay, well, see, now I don't. See the, <laughs> the crowd gets slower and slower and slower, as you can see. It's up to 140 milliseconds, which that's why they start getting... Obviously, you guys won't be able to notice the jaggedness, but they start getting jagged the longer the simulation has been running for. But, you know, with stuff like this, I can actually track down issues and see them as opposed to just guessing as to what the problem is. Well, that'll be nice compared to scrolling through all those pages of code, just hoping you can spot it. Will there eventually be lessons on how we can implement something like this, or...? Yeah, this is all part of the class. Awesome. Um, I used... Um, for the front end... Oh, there's so many projects. Uh, so the front end is an ASP.NET MVC application. Um, I'm using SignalR for the um, transport layer um, to send information and to receive information to and from the dashboard. And then on the client side, I'm using Angular. So there's my application definition. Oh yeah, by the way, um, deep linking. So if you hit refresh, brings you right into that client that you're looking at. That was a pain to do. I mean, deep, deep linking itself isn't very difficult with uh, with an application like this, thanks to Angular. But getting making sure that everything gets synchronized and you actually get the right client is difficult. But um, but yeah, so I'm using Angular. Uh, those are all my Angular routes. Um, I build up a couple custom directives for my graphs. So my graphs are all um, directives as well as my log viewer. So what that means, like Here's the code for um, the top, this bit right here, is literally just this because of the um, directives that I created. Very cool. And will uh, the Angular stuff be what you're tackling first when we record? Uh, I don't know actually what we're doing with that yet. I'm going to have to talk to Jason. I think the plan is actually to build the auto updater first. Gotcha. It is the fabulous auto updater. <laughs> we should. But, um, but no, Angular is lots of fun. And then I'm using Envision for the for the graphs, um, but it's heavily it's pretty heavily customized actually, like adding the left thing and stuff like that very so cool overall quite a bit of code I wonder how much code I dumped into this so far um, everybody put in their guess where is that button I'm blind there we go uh, What do you think, Wolf? Awesome. How, no, how many lines of code? No, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Lots, I guess. I'd say between five and 700,000 lines. Yeah. Um, actually, it's only 2,100 lines of uh, C-sharp, and I don't know if I can get an accurate count of how much JavaScript I have in it. <laughs> Just but it says 80 gig, gig, gigaquads. <laughs> About a thousand lines of uh, JavaScript. Um, which is fine, I guess, because I hate JavaScript. Well, I love JavaScript, but I hate it. It's stupid. It's nice. I don't know. <laughs> it's Java. 
Now, how many lines would it be if you're using C? Well, I mean, it's a web application. You can't really code a web application in C. Or as far as the, as far as the for, uh, front end. But in addition to this, there's also the um, the actual counter server itself, which the counter server is responsible for um, getting information from the server server, getting information from the client, and then aggregating it and sending it out to the dashboard. <coughs> um, then I have this namespace, which has all the counter information in it. So that's my counter publisher. Um, and then I have different counter sets, like I have a client counter set and a zone counter set with all the different samples that you can get. But um, the most fun I've had is with binary readers and binary writers. Pain in the ass. Basically, every time uh, the binary reader and binary writer is the most compact form of sending information that you can get, of course, without any form of compression. But um, you, it has to line up, if you know what I mean. Like, if you write to a huge buffer a bunch of data and you read it back, everything has to line up perfectly. And if something misaligns, then the entire message is basically worthless. So I okay. spent a lot of time debugging my binary streams. But, um, that seems kind of god-awful to me, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, again, it comes down to, I don't want this... Oh, yeah, I could send all the counter information in JSON if I wanted to, but that would be ridiculously slow, and the counter publisher itself would be impacting performance negatively. I mean, even with this, there's still an overhead. It's just not as big not as... Not as bad, you know. yeah. So essentially, binary was the best um, choice as far as performance. As far as sending the data back and forth in, in a binary stream was the best way. I mean, I might even add gzip compression to it. I don't know. Um, but uh, there's, no, there's no more compact way to send information without compression. OK. Very nice. NATO, is there anything you wanted to cover this week? Uh, not really. I've been a bit too busy to do anything. Sounds good. Is your uh, level coming along? Uh, slowly. Yeah. As they do. All right. Well, then on that note, uh, we'll move on to some of the art stuff. Uh, Nick's got some personal project stuff he wouldn't mind showing. And uh, Richard did some more work on his gun. Wolf says he's got a little bit... Uh, Sergio, oh, uh, everybody who wasn't here last week, say hi, Sergio. Hi there. Hey, Can you hear me? Sergio joined us last week and brought some very nice artwork, which we will show today as well, so everybody can catch up. Do you have anything else for this? Yeah. Oh, I... sorry. sorry, I thought you were asking me. Yeah, I am. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I did um, a few, uh, actually one environment, and a few sketches, and I'm refining the ones, uh, the characters that that, uh, that I get, uh, gave you. Awesome. All righty. Well, uh, if you could grab Nick for me, we'll take a look at the stuff he's been working on just to kind of keep up with his life, and then we'll move on to the work people have done for this week. You're talking to me? Yes, yes I am. Yep. Oh. <laughs> I can't do it this week. I don't have the thingy. <laughs> nice. Oh, you, you did show us that, I think. No, I saw it on your Facebook. No, I didn't see this. I saw it on his Facebook. Very cool. Am I muted? I can't even tell. Now I can hear you. Oh, fantastic. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like the, uh, the one with like the three ladies, I did that one 
filming midnight and eight in the morning last Sunday because I wanted to get it done for that show and that was last day I had to work on it. So there's some things I'm not happy with about it, but it, it, it was not. But, that was the one I saw. Was to say, but what you are happy with is that it sold. Exactly. So yeah. congratulations on selling a piece at the show. Thanks. And yeah, the, the robots I've just been working on in my free time. He reminds me of something, and I'm desperately trying to figure out what it is every time I see him, but I think it might be from the Jetsons. That could be. Kind of in place with a cannon. When you were doing that, how did you do the planet? Did... Um, it's... I just made a round mask and filled it in. So you just hand-painted it? And then I just used the smudge tool. Like, I created a gradient on it, and then I used the smudge tool to smudge the gradient for the clouds. Yeah, I gotcha. And then I, like, did, like, mess with layers to do color. It was black and white before. Very awesome. Oh, we have someone else new in here tonight. Lou. Hi, Lou. Oh, ouch. <laughs> yeah. Lou, where are you at? He has a mic. If, uh, someone's um, I don't see him in the webinar. Uh, He's not. He's not actually in the webinar, unless he's secretly Wolf, Chris, Richard, or Sergio. Uh, he does seem to be able to hear what's going on. I think. Oh no! So far, it's all been questions based on what's typed. So yeah. Uh, what is that robot's objective? What is he, what is he thinking right now? He's hunting space bears, I guess. I don't know. Space, space bears? bears. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah, I, originally I had him fighting another robot, but I didn't do a good job on the other robot, so I just deleted the other robot. <laughs> uh, thank you for that coughing, Jag. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how am I supposed to feel... Am I supposed, I supposed to, to be rooting for him to catch the space bears, or am I rooting for the space bears in this? Well, I, I immediately saw Ewoks, so I'm rooting for the robot. <laughs> <laughs> he looks, he almost looks a little skittish, with like the wide eye there. It's awesome. Well, it looks like he just maybe just spotted a, a what are we calling them, space bears? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> so what's that? Primary objective? Space bears. Sounds like it should be a Adult Swim cartoon. <laughs> Space bears. It very well could be. Yep, that's all I've really got. Uh... Nelson, in order for people to join the webinar, they have to have signed up for the class. Is that not correct? That is correct. Okay. And same for BuzzNet? No, you can no BuzzNet, yeah. Hours. He can just hop in. Which is what it looks to be that he's done. Well, we'll see how that goes around. All right. Good job, Nick. And Good job on selling that one. Yeah, thanks. That is awesome. That's awesome, yeah. All righty, uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. What we got? Uh, Wolf, why don't we grab you? See what we got. All right. Nelson? Alrighty then. Yeah, nothing's happening. 
Uh, Nelson, can we grab Wolf? Thank you, sir. You have the button now, by the way. Oh, do I? I do. <laughs> this this is what this is what Wolf opened with last week. That's what I opened with. Um, I said I, I I told him that I it's, I had a uh, a different one that was drawn a little better, but this is by far the best design. It's still a solid design, I'm gonna admit. And huh? Oh yeah, I'm totally getting the Halo. You should just replace Halo with this game. <laughs> You're very quiet, but I can kind of hear you. Any, anyway, then, then this is what I actually show them. And it, it seems like we're using this, right, Steve? So far, we, that's... Oh, we all pretty much agreed that we liked the... Uh the general outlay of it as a base suit under right. whatever armor. Yeah, or like the scout would just probably just be wearing this because they can move really fast. So yeah, it was, it was something I thought we could get in there. We have NATO here this week. What do you think, NATO? Yeah, looks good to me. Cool. There we go. The votes were all I, so good job. Yeah. Um, we might change the helmet some, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so, and then I just added, I was thinking what um, about, it, it didn't turn out that great, but I, I, I didn't spend that much time, I just did a little uh, last night, but uh, I was thinking uh, uh, a sniper uh, could um, have a, a kind of trench coat on, and this it, it ends up looking like burn spots. But that was supposed to be camouflage, but I didn't look at any camouflage thing. But I was thinking it could kind of have uh, it could wear this to kind of blend in. Cool. And then uh, this thing. Oh, I added uh, a breather. Yeah, um, I mean it's it's out of proportion again, but it gets the point across. Uh, or I mean it's out of perspective. But see, like this little this little uh, tube here. I was thinking, like you know, the the air comes in. Well, th this was this was my idea of this would be since we were in the desert that uh, there would be dust storms and stuff, and uh, so um, this would especially for. Um, a sniper who, who would have to kind of stay put and just uh, be kind of self-reliant by um, himself might you know dust storm comes up it could put that on and then uh, these little tubes uh, I, my idea was that's where um, the air is kind of being filtered the sands being filtered out of it and stuff so it can breathe and uh, I was thinking that it could be removable and put another one in if it it's uh, too gritty. Cool. I didn't get a chance to talk to you about that, but that was actually one of the things I was also thinking about. Is you know all the tear gas and all that other stuff that you have. Yeah. Um, that having some form of respiratory filter for everybody that just um, fits right in with those glasses yeah. would be good because it would also protect the eyes from that same hazard. Right. It'd be like a biohazard, like a, basically it would allow you to set up a self-contained uh, breathing system to keep your to keep you guys safe. And these these should these should be more uh, goggle-like. Uh, I try to make them a little bit more goggle-like uh, in this, yeah. but uh, so it actually protects the eyes. But it gives the idea, cool. though. We can. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, you can kind of see how, how this could be um, camouflage stuff. And... Yeah, I like that. So. And so, some of the work that I've been using with the shaders, um, one of the ones that I put together was sort of a dissolving shader. 
but you could easily have it set up so that you have two textures and then the dissolving shader is what changes between them so instead of doing a gradual fade from one to the other for example you could you could use the a texture map to control how it fades out so you could use like a really fine granular one if you just wanted to sort of fizzle like static from one image to the other something like that are you talking about are you talking about the camouflage yeah so if we did if we went with the idea that you know he hits a button and then it changes to fit the yeah. color scheme of the region that he's in right. yeah uh, uh, another reason for um, for for this uh, I thought uh, it you know since it's more it's more of a cloth uh, it's gonna be less reflective as well so I thought that would be kind of going over um, the suit would be um, kind of nice and then you know also the hood to for protection just against the sun and whatnot yeah it, yeah it's very firefly so it's I like work. it yeah I, I like it, it yeah. right I kind of you know I kind of like that kind of uh, it, it it is a little bit of a retro feel so now the this the, the, the what bothers me the most is how I, I have these <laughs> come in at the you know it's like I mean maybe the wind could have been blowing on this side but it should be you know it should it looks like the wind is blowing on both sides but um, it should it should be, be bellowing out or <laughs> well it should either it should either be just hanging straight down from here or or the if the wind was blowing here it should be here and vice versa but I I was tired and I wasn't really thinking I was just trying to go around the shape and stuff I wasn't really thinking how yeah. Just work, but no I think worries. It, it looks good. I think if you, if if you don't look at that bottom part, and I'm I'm covering it on my screen <laughs> so you can't see it, uh, then it looks a little better. No, that's coming along nice. I like the addition to it. Is that what you had to show this week? That's what I have to show this week. Good man. That's that's two weeks in a row, Wolf. You're locked now, and you're getting a new computer or an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you're, yeah, I, you're, I, you're totally boned. Yeah, well, you know, it, it it is it is a pain to work, uh, you know, higher resolution and uh, start doing layers and stuff. And uh, my computer, as is, uh, it lags and it kind of locks up for a while. And it, you know, it's really really challenging if I want to do other things. Like I'd I'd really like to be able to watch training videos as I draw and whatnot, but. Anyway, soon I'll be able to do that. All right, very nice. Um, <coughs> hey, Nelson. Uh, Lou apparently registered for the class last week, but he didn't get an email to get into the actual webinar. Is there anything we can do to? I can tell it to resend out emails. Uh, resend the confirmation links to everyone. All right. Uh, Is there any way to check and make sure he signed up right? Uh, if I know his name. Uh, in here it's capital L U G H. Space capital A Z R E A K. I, I don't so. see that. Uh, maybe he signed up for the wrong link. I'll send. I'll send him the correct one. Okay. Um. Alrighty, well, let's uh, let's see here. Uh, Lance, are you at work? Are you at home? Richard? Um, yep. Hang on. Okay. Good. I'm not muted. Yeah, uh, I'm at home. You're at home. All right, Nelson. Can we grab uh, Richard's screen and we'll take a look at his modeling work, which has progressed nicely.
Okay, you guys seeing uh, Max or Busnet? We are seeing Max. All right, cool. Okay, well, let me just set up a quick render here. I should have had these renders set up before, but... You really should have. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's somewhat faster. Didn't you save the renders you sent? I saved some of them on Dropbox, but I've done some work since then, so... Ah. Um, but, nice. yeah, I ran into a bit of an issue with the, uh, the, the topology on the lower receiver. So I had to go through and make a couple changes so that when the slide pops back, um, the lower receiver, it, it needed to be lower. And part of it, the problem is, as you got back toward the rail, it, uh, we've got the top part of the slide that's up higher significantly than the rest of it. So I had to make some changes to make sure everything behaved. But So you didn't uh, end up with any gaps when it pulled back? Initially, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so I fixed that. Um, I put in the cover for the um, for the ejector port and that actually as the slide moves back that jumps down out of the way. So that effectively Uh, you'll notice where the ejector port is, that cover is still partially there, and it just kind of slips down out of the way. And it looks like uh, Joshua has joined us. Congratulations, Joshua. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Well, it's great to be here. I actually uh, spent the last week... Uh, watching um, almost 150 hours worth of your videos. Oh my! Oh, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I am caught up. Wow. Cool. That rate, you're probably more caught up than we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, of, a lot has happened in the past uh, year. The past videos, weekend. So. <laughs> Where are you at? Yeah, well, the past weekend too. Uh, Saudi Arabia, actually, near Dubai. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a great area, actually, if you don't mind the, the puddles of water that are in the desert now because it's been raining so crazy much. <laughs> I always thought Dubai looked beautiful, but... Mm, it is. I, it's I, very beautiful. I'm a Northie. I'm not sure that the temperatures would be accommodating to me. I doubt. Uh, it's very cold right now, actually. Uh, we're just we're just coming out of uh, double digit negatives, so. Yeah, that's it's actually way too cold for me. <laughs> I would die. <laughs> yeah. Well, this weapon looks amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> this model has really come yeah. along well. Yes, it has. So I've got, I've got the uh, sort of like a rubber grip pad for you to pull the slide back on the rear. And then uh, that's also a close-up for the carbon fiber that's on handle. It's looking very nice. The couple renders you did with AO looked really good. Cool. Yeah, I, I still have to add a couple other things. Like I need to set up the slide release. And at the base of the trigger guard, I'm going to set up a release for the magazine. Very cool. Well done, sir. Your modeling is coming along very nicely. Thank you. I like the safety, too. That's, that's smoothed very nicely. Thanks. Yep. <clears throat> I'm very happy with the way that one's turned out, actually. And uh, it's actually on the other side as well, so it won't matter if you guys right or left-handed. 
if we bother putting that in ever. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get that far or not, but hey, if we do, we're already covered. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. <laughs> And is the uh, space rifle next, the energy rifle? Yeah, that'll be next, and then uh, <laughs> I'll try making a person. <laughs> I'm excited to see that. So Steve, how many videos are not actually up for the class that he is actually is missing? Wow, you're actually going to call us out live, huh? I believe there's six. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. There are some that are missing. Uh, I think there's some that's Boy, I want to say it's about three months worth, <laughs> give or take. <laughs> but uh, I will look into that. I know. The most recent video is. It? Yeah, that's uh, Nelson's slowly been giving me access to and teaching me how to do stuff on the site so that I don't break his site. And so I recorded last week, and I'm recording this week. <laughs> so today's will also get up relatively quickly. And Nelson, can you give me all the other videos that haven't been rendered in FTP or something, and I can just take care of them? Depends on how badly you want them. <laughs> so badly. Give it. <laughs> I want so badly for you to give it to me, Nelson. What else can I say? Uh, I think that's fine. So, yeah, actually, one of the other things that I really want to uh, fix it up. Um, is the rear sight. It's there as a placeholder, but I really want to figure out something that looks a little better with the, uh, the overall design of the weapon. Are you still using the night vision on your, uh, on your sights? The glowing uh, green grass? Yeah. That's, that's the plan. So I've been looking up at a, a couple of uh, different designs for it and seeing what I can gather from that. And the tip of the barrel, um, you know, it's how it kind of has a taper toward the front here. And uh, I was thinking that really isn't conducive if you're going to thread on a silencer. So uh, one thing I was thinking is that effectively the civilian version of this weapon doesn't have the threaded barrel, and then the military version does. That makes sense. So you would have a, an exception there that if a civilian buys this type of gun, unless it's the military model, he's not going to have access to a silencer. Very nice. And do you have uh, an option for an extended barrel for longer range? Um, I didn't think of that, but we could certainly put one in. Are you going to work on rifles later? Yep, the energy uh, rifle is next, and uh, we'll see about uh, building up. I was thinking, you know, Sorry, I, 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 I like how in, in say, something like um, Halo, I guess, um, how, you know, how they have, like, uh, LED screens or whatever they have, you know, the, they have, like, feedback whether it's um, information about how much bullets you have or I don't know. I, I think that's kind of cool to add to something, especially especially it'd be interesting to have that in something that doesn't necessarily look um, particularly futuristic except for that. It's just my thoughts. So you mean sort of like the, the ammo counter in Aliens, that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, similar yeah, to that. Yeah, you know, things like that, you know, you know, little indications of, like, I mean, I think, it, I don't know, it's just, it, it seems, it seems like in the future, we'll have more of that kind of, kind of stuff. Maybe, maybe, it's probably a little bit less likely to be on a handgun, a little bit more likely to be on, like, a rifle or something. Or like, True. When, like well, when they're running with the sniper rifle down, you can see that there's a readout in the scope versus right. just glass. Right. Yeah. They, they have so, they have something like now. I think I, I think they already have it up where it's it's like this this sniping rifle that uh, that it actually aims for you. It's like this technical screen thing. Um, yes. <laughs> that that almost sounds like first hand experience. 
Well, I, I know that pistols today they do have a little indicator that pops up to indicate that there's a chambered round. Um, I think for handguns that's about all you'd get, but I don't know. One of the other things I was thinking of doing is setting up. Um, uh, let me just see here. Where we have the accessory, you've got that bottom rail. And it wouldn't be that difficult to set something up that would hook up to this rail, but it would actually wrap around the slide and come up over top. And you could attach something to the top, like you would have on a rifle. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I don't know why you would need it for a pistol, but I've noticed that some uh, like different handguns today have that sort of bottom to top mounted rail system. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And it's cool. just basically Sometimes designed. Sometimes people like to put uh, an additional. An additional. Sorry. An additional sight. I think I have a delayed yeah. uh, mic. Well, it's traveling okay. quite a yeah, way, so yeah, that could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can actually hear the echo, and it comes back quite slowly. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, you could have a mount for an additional sight or even a scope if you had an option for a longer barrel. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a game. Sometimes we'll do things just for aesthetics more than for it making a lot of practical sense. Yeah, right. that's true. I don't know how we were, like, if we actually reached a a firm solution on how we were going to handle the different types of range combat, but one of the things that I was working with was the idea of three size classes for pistols, or at least three size classes for ammunition. So, whatever the future equivalent is of a 50 caliber Desert Eagle, that's your large handgun, and then medium would be like a Beretta 9 or something like that, and then a USB compact or a Walther PPK would be the, uh, the small pistol. That sort of thing. Yeah, I, just, I've, I don't think we're yeah, uh, un, until we actually have the framework doing everything we wanted to. I don't think we've even been too concerned with setting that up. But, okay. But yeah, once we get there, we can certainly. Yeah. Uh, I can whip up a document, throw it on Dropbox, and then um, yeah, we can go through and tear through it and work it up. Awesome. Um, do you have your uh, timeline? And Wolf, did you get a chance to read it? I, I haven't yet. Um, I'm going to look at that this way. I do have the timeline, yeah. Maybe we should go over that quick. And That would be great. I've been wondering about the timeline because it's it seemed to have changed a little bit since the original way back when. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it hasn't really changed a lot. More, more so, just uh, we've kind of nailed it down. <laughs> we, we have a better idea what it is. I thought uh, Richard did a really good job with it. Did you get that in Dropbox? I didn't put it in Dropbox. No, well, at least not the shared portion of the Dropbox. Okay, we'll have to get that in there. I I read through it again and I didn't really see anything that struck me as not working, so Okay. Cool. And I actually read it line by line this time, so Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's like there's a lot of stuff that is a re that it's basically just listing things that happen way before we're gonna be involved as players. We could hit, okay, so we could this hit. is a very personal storyline. Pieces of it is, but the actual timeline breaks down the kind of big picture of what happened. Right. Um, yeah. Richard, why don't we just kind of go over that, just does, just on the big picture side. Th does this explain the origin of the space bears? <laughs> uh, Wolf what? of the space bears. Wolf, would, what would I do without you here? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I haven't put that part in yet, uh, but I'll work <laughs> on it. Uh, but if you keep pushing we'll your luck, we'll talk about it. <laughs> what? But if you keep pushing your luck, we're going to end up with space bears. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You've already got um, Sam. So, yeah, as far as the big picture, 
<laughs> uh, we basically have uh, um, about 100 years from now, we've got the Earth basically starts dying due to the degradation of the um, magnetic field. They can't mm -hmm. figure out the cause, so they start looking for um, alternatives, uh, alternative planets where to live. And they basically end up cruising through all the old extrasolar planetary data that we've been gathering today to find uh, likely candidates. And then based on that, they eventually develop a fund uh, fundamentally simple form of FTL travel, enough to send out some probes to basically go out and verify whether those planets can support human life. All right. So they send out these scouts. Are they manned scouts or are they uh, just uh, the, machines? The initial probes are unmanned. Okay. And uh, yeah, a number of years later, they basically um, one of the probes reports back that there's a planet with very good with a very good chance of supporting human life, but due to a navigational error, they can't tell it to get any closer. Right. Okay. So that's best a, option that's is exactly what I was thinking. Mission. There you go. Yeah. Now, how many so planets? They send uh, out a manned mission. That. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, how many planets does? Uh, how many planets are discovered that are habitable? Well, we figured uh, initially it would just be the one, and then if we wanted to do an expansion for another world to go and visit, then that would be mm -hmm. another planet that gets discovered. That sort of thing. Um, but the initial idea was that it's uh, the the story that we're going to play through as players and developing the world and all that kind of stuff. It's meant to focus mostly on Aletheia, so we're going to keep the scope narrowed to that for, for the time being. That's good. So then, basically, we send we send a pilot to make first contact. Uh, yeah, and when he gets there, he confirms that that Aletheia will support human life, so he sets up the equipment to build essentially a stable gate between Earth and this system, and it allows other ships to basically get here in one jump as opposed to the three-year trip he took. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then let's and, so and then let's just out. let's just Sorry, ju then let's just jump to everything that goes wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it's still in red, so I'm working on it. But essentially, the highlights of it are that we're basically making progress, establishing zones that we can go and settle, um, based on negotiations with the Alethian people. And somewhere along the line, somebody steps over the line, they start doing, um, setting up mining efforts and military bases and stuff like that, which from the Aletheans' point of view, that wasn't part of the deal. And it seems to me that the Aletheans have elements of combat in every aspect of their society, whereas for us, it's primarily military and law enforcement. So from okay. their point of view, set up solely for military use, that's basically interpreted by them. That's aggression. So they're initially against it because they don't quite get where we're coming from. So Richard, you and uh, your team, they're all still working on the storyline then? Or I, is it I, 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 I muted my myself head. when he said team because I started laughing yeah. earlier. <laughs> yeah, at, at the moment, uh, the other main story writer, Ray, uh, retired out of country. And uh, he's he's, okay. he's kind of uh, AWOL now for a few months. Uh, okay. Yeah. I've noticed um, a, like, a lot of people leaving the the project. I in the beginning, we had some artists, uh, some girls from uh, around the world, and some guys, and they've all left. So it's kind of confusing to keep up with who's still in the project. Yeah, for the for the most part, they're with you here tonight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I I do a little bit of everything. I do 
some writing, I do some modeling, um, learning, texturing, and I do some coding. But there are people out there that were part of this project in the past that I miss them because they're better at all of these aspects. <laughs> is there a way to see who all is in the uh, in the webinar? Uh, um, not for us. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, you guys. Uh, ask Steve. Just yeah, okay, so we got Steve, we got Wolf. There's. Uh, yeah, we we've got Richard we got Steve and, and Nelson. We're the two instructors. Okay. Um, and, I'm gonna actually write this down for a second. And, okay. and then we have, if, if this is everyone. And then we have Wolf, who is another Steve. All right. <laughs> And we have Lance, who is a Richard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Lance, uh, R Richard, Steve. And we have uh, Jizba, uh, who is Nick. Jizba, Big J. Big J. That's right. <laughs> I still remember the story from yeah, never mind. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, we have uh, Arkendell, who is Sergio, who just joined us last week. Sergio. That's actually a familiar name. Okay. Who else? Yeah. I've got Lance, Richard, Steve, Jisba, Sergio. Uh, oh, of course, uh, Nelson. And remember, there's two Steves. Nelson is Nelson. <laughs> oh, there's two Steves. Yeah, at SJC2112 is me, one of the instructors, and Wolf Knightley, is, his actual name is Steve. Actually, okay. it's also Wolf, so don't, you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, pretty much he just goes by I, Wolf here. I think I wrote that down already somewhere, but I had forgotten it. Um, we have, okay. And we have NATO, who is Chris, who is... Ah, Chris. yes, NATO. Yep. Native uh, leadership material. Yeah, he's our design lead on the actual game design side. So that's, that's like up to seven, right? So far? Okay, including Nelson. And... Yep. And we've just had a Black Panther hop okay. into the. Nelson is buzzer. programming. Yep. Sorry, what was that, Steve? We just had a Black Panther hop into the uh, into Buzznet. Black yeah. Panther, huh? But he hasn't said anything. Oh, at least it's not a space, space panda. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, there's different types of space bears. I don't know what the heck is going on with that. <laughs> it's a completely different culture, though. Yeah. Well, we'll say they're hibernating now. That gives me time to work up the concept. <laughs> yeah. They've been waiting out in space this whole time. I don't see how that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it should work just as well as the uh, sand penguins. <laughs> and I was wondering if we were still using those tonight. <laughs> uh, they just right. they just came back up tonight. <laughs> I, I kind of hope oh, not. Good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> No, I actually like those. It's, it adds like uh, humor into the game where like if there's just too much seriousness, somebody's got to laugh at one point. Yeah. In, in my head, I've always seen like a cut scene where a couple of soldiers are walking along and a bunch of sand penguins come down the side of the thing, and the one guy just looks at the other and is like, "Sand penguins," and then they just walk off. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That would be perfect. I'd like that. Uh, okay, so back when I first started watching these, uh, before I actually began watching all of this, um, a year ago I heard that uh, 3D Buzz was announcing that they wanted to uh, start an MMO, but I didn't really get into it. I'm not sure why. Uh, I had plans for my own, and it happened to be exactly the same as yours. It's kind of crazy. Not exactly the same. Uh, the storylines are a little bit different, but it is the fall of Earth. Um, 
everybody moving to another planet and the aliens and the humans kind of clash. And uh, the magic system's kind of similar. I had based it off of minerals that uh, there's a central power source in the center of the Earth and it focuses uh, its energy at a certain mineral and the mineral that you carry around is uh, it is activated differently depending on what type it is. And so it's somewhat similar to the silicon. Huh. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and it's a really, really long storyline. <laughs> 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 Somebody is watching Game of Thrones. Oh, you got somebody. Somebody's mic open. Yeah, that's Game of Thrones. Or not Game of Thrones. Uh, uh, Walking Dead. Let's see. He's watching TV. I'm trying to see if there's any kind of indicator on who's talking. It's not me. Yeah, it was Scott. Um, he said he's jumping in and out because he's more interested in the coding side. So he must okay. he must be out at the moment. And when I opened up his mic, he doesn't know yeah. I did that. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he should probably not do that. I don't, uh, don't think he wants to talk. I cut it back off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sabotage. <laughs> Sabotage. All right. All righty. Well, welcome anyway, Scott. Glad you're here. So, thank you. So, uh, yeah, timeline-wise, uh, they make first contact. The first thing goes wrong, starts a conflict for... Uh, some amount of time, about a year, something like that. Uh, yeah, just under mm -hmm. a year. As far as like, as far as the timeline goes, I'm keeping it in the Earth calendar because that's what we understand as humans. Um, as far as how long it takes for Alethea to orbit the Sun, I don't think that's ever been established. Um, but for the sake of sanity, I'm basing everything on, you know, yeah, that, human timeline that, for that works for me. Years and a lot. <laughs> now, doesn't Alethea uh, go around two suns, or is that two moons that go around Alethea? Moons. Well, there's, yeah, okay. I, I, there's two moons. I'm not really going to go as far as to say that that's settled. <laughs> right. Yeah. But two moons. I thought it'd be neat to have two suns. But... Yeah. That may come yeah, down two to. Two suns would be a little crazy. That may come down to who makes the prettiest artwork for the skyboxes. <laughs> I did like that yeah, too. Yeah. Well, the two suns oh, uh, is interesting. Speaking of which, I think yeah, it'd be pretty difficult to get a planet that happens to support human life in a system that is that different. Well, realistically, yeah, but well, I don't know. <laughs> Fun <laughs> realism. I don't know about that. But yeah, probably at least two moons, anyway. Just something to look a little alien. Um, you were going to say? Uh, I was going to say something that's completely unrelated, so I was going to wait till later, actually. Oh, okay. All right, oh, okay. So, so they had <laughs> one year-long conflict, uh, brokered a peace for that, and then basically had another yep. one. Yeah, uh, and that's a little ways down the line. Uh, like, they sign the armistice, it stops that particular war. They start work on a second stage jump gate that's basically bigger. It will allow more ships to come through. And uh, I can't remember the fellow's name. He came up with the concept art with that uh, that crash ship oh, settlement. Oh, Miguel. Miguel. Miguel, yes, thank you. Um, Riffing off of that, I set up a timeline entry for one ship to have just that sort of thing happen to it. And uh, effectively, because there's no established orbital network, network like what we have around Earth, um, they aren't able to find that ship. It goes down so far off course that they don't find it for about three years. 
And by that point, they've kind of, you know, they've managed to settle in with the people that are left, and um, effectively the Aletheans say, well, you know, they're here, fine, just let them be kind of thing. So that particular colony ends up uh, being allowed to stay where they are, but it's one of the more inhospitable locations. So it's tough living there. Which would explain the militaristic nature of the walls and all that sort of stuff. There you go. And so they settled that. And then there is a uh, personal incident that triggers a final conflict. And that is basically where we've come in. So you've got about a 30-year yeah. jump from when they found it to where we're actually coming into the game. Yeah. Yeah. 31 years between first contact and, yeah, where we are in, you know, starting the open world story. As far as the the uh, combat system and the MOBA style that we're looking at now, since that's basically humans versus aliens, I picture that being in either the first or the second conflict stage. And if it's primary... If it's primarily military engaging them, I'd say it's probably going to be that first, that first part, when they're dealing right. with the military bases and the, say we're the still first doing mobile settlements. Well, uh, in the long run, yeah. it will be both. We will have both a persistent and a non-persistent area, but a MOBA will be the easiest thing to get an alpha out with. So we're going to concentrate on having that first. Mm -hmm. And then some of the. Are we doing that because we don't have enough people to uh, make the huge MMO that we originally planned, or? Uh, well, both number of people and time frame. Um, we can get a mobile out quicker, and then of course we hope once we actually launch an alpha of something, that that will help attract more people, yeah. and then we can carry mm -hmm. on with the persistent side of the world. And I mean, even if that, even if it doesn't attract a whole lot more people, we still have a core group that has experience working together and working on a project toward that common goal. Uh, I, I hate to interrupt so many times, no but um, not at all. Instead of releasing, like, um, uh, we have a dream that I've watched for, on, like, over a hundred hours worth. And it's slowly become less and less of what it was amazing. It was amazing at first, and then we keep backing up and taking more and more away from it. Instead of releasing um, this less than idea game, why not just release like mini games that build up the storyline to the point where we get to the actual MMO? And release those games one at a time. So there's like an actual series, like a, a book series or a comic series in between. Hmm. I don't think anybody's ever because brought that up. That's what we thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but um, I don't know who, uh, who's in charge of the payments at this point, but. Um, I do have an idea there if there's no money and like I understand that there's it's very hard to get a lot of people together without a lot of money being brought into the situation. Um, if you do need help with that, I do know a lot of people here that are quite rich. Uh, <laughs> besides that, um, I need it, a is, computer. it is self-sufficient. Yeah. <laughs> it is self-sufficient producing um, a series like of games because as you produce one small game it will pay for the next one which pays for the next one which pays for uh, the promo video that you can put on Kickstarter and you can request you know just a couple million to make the big MMO that you're wanting to make yeah I, 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 I don't know that we're uh, I don't think the idea was ever to to make a game just 
just to to sell it, but maybe there there might be um, certain uh, kind of micro payment type things for. Yeah, I know Jason originally wanted to release it for free and then maybe do a micro transaction type system with it. That's a good system. Yeah, but uh, it can be done in other ways as well. Which I have done a lot of research into. Well, we're certainly going to have a great deal to talk about, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. We'll, uh, we'll bring those rules to the yeah. table and see what happens. Um, the, the first game at this point, I would almost say, has to be a MOBA-style type thing, just based on yeah. the mm -hmm. four or five oh, yeah, months absolutely. of programming yeah. work that Nelson's done. Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, whatever work's already been done needs to be turned into something uh, usable because it would be such a huge waste. But yeah, it sounds yeah. like you have some very interesting ideas on how we can proceed step by step with well, that. I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's uh, that's true, and it's interesting. I mean, we, we we can, as far as the MOBA th thing, I mean, we can we could do it. And and we could decide whether uh, we want actually want it as is in uh, in the um, MM, MMO as 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 a, uh, a a feature in it, or um, if it would be better to just have that as a separate thing that's just in the universe promoting. Uh, the deal. I mean, it's like it, it is. It is as as is. I know um, NATO's had had to kind of balance um, what is in the best interest of of the uh, MOBA game uh, uh, versus uh, what works as a MMO. So I mean, it, it might be kind of empowering to not have to worry about how they connect. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and well, then, that sounds like adaptability, and I—that's a good thing. Which it, it'd, be, it'd be much, it'd be much nicer to to go. Hey, we can make this into the that and be and be into that rather than like, well, we ha clearly we have to because we have to justify this in that content. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to start out with something that just says. Uh, Ooh, I'm, re I'm really losing up. you, man. That way you can oh, multiply. I'm sorry. Let's start over. Uh, it's start good again. to show the capabilities of the group. Yeah. yeah. By doing. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I was saying that it sounds like adaptability, and adaptability is a great feature in a group. And with this. Uh, with the smaller production, it shows what the capabilities are, and it gives a, a history to 3D Buzz that can be seen by investors. Absolutely, I got the I got yeah. the tingles now. Could <laughs> <laughs> you not? Yeah, I know you don't want to know about that wolf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're always telling me. So what else do we have to show? Yeah, let's see. Uh, Sergio, Sergio had some stuff. Yes. Nelson, you still around? He's back. No. Well, bring up Sergio <laughs> anyway. No, we have a new person that I didn't. That wasn't muted. Oh no, no, he wants to be muted. Mute him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> it's the space bird. Nice. This is the space bird. Hungry. Wait. <laughs> and you have this one. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> Same thing with I the space bird. Sergio, now I know why you've been so quiet for the last half hour. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, so you just ran with it. Yeah, I I didn't have much time, so I only refined these ones. Yeah, they look great. That, that's a nice I color. Uh, yeah, it's just um, 
sorry, a color uh, layer on top. Nothing fancy, but um, the idea is once you have them, this done, you collapse it and paint over. Um, yeah, this, these two are pretty much all I, I got to refine uh, Very nice. the character side. And this was uh, something of uh, what we were talking about, the crash ship, uh, last class. Um, I don't quite like the, um, the structure of the piece, but um, I was thinking maybe if I crop it, it will be better. Uh, anyway, um, this, uh, this is almost something of what I was um, thinking about. Um, some type of favela-like city. Something like, let me see if I have this. Something more like, like this. I know it will be a nightmare to model <laughs> to do this modular, uh, but uh, actually, if you if you model a lot of similar, actually, if you model that modularly, it might actually be easier. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, actually, I know some uh, pro uh, progressive software that will model it for you. Um, if you have the the modules, it'll just build all of it, the entire city. Hey, there's a whole other city That's in nice. the back part. Yeah, right. and you have uh, an Elitium watching here. Uh. <laughs> uh, nice. Wow, that really gives the scale of the ship. Yeah. Uh, mostly because I was uh, thinking about cropping it because if you go full uh, with the full picture, you, you don't really notice the city. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Uh, but this is kind of the idea I had. You, you know, um, if if you made like, uh, it, would, it wouldn't even have to be dark, maybe twilight or a little bit later, uh, but you, it, it, the sun's starting to go down, you could have uh, lights coming on in the city and stuff, that would really um, make it yeah, easier. Yeah, it will, pop, it will uh, pop out. Yeah. yeah. Make that pop, yeah. Yeah, yeah more... Um, other than this, I do have a few sketches, but uh, I was wondering if you could approve one uh, because I I had a ton of work this uh, oh, this week. Yeah, sure, bring um, them up. Let's have a look and uh, also you should you should uh, uh, maybe experiment with like kind of neon uh, look. Kind of it might be an interesting kind of cyber more like type uh, type uh, the style of drone you're saying. Hmm? Kind of drone or something like that. I don't know what you're saying. Drone? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I was I was saying for like the city, there could be uh, oh. like neon yeah, yeah. lights and stuff, and uh, it could be kind of a little bit cyberpunky maybe. Yeah. Well, this is just a sketch, um, mostly to show. Um, that kind of city I was showing before. Right. I, I, I think it should be run down. Like I think it, if you could make it a cross between between looking kind of third world run down like and looking kind of futuristic, like that's what I was thinking. Kind of the yeah, yeah. Off. This is just the, the basic yeah. structure. It's not right. uh, okay. anything. Run the, the, this is the same thing. I mean, yeah, I mean it was basically built from ship parts, so it'll right. it'll have an innately futuristic look. Yeah, a little metal. Yeah. Metal houses, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Uh, I finished this one a bit more and I already put it in the Dropbox. Uh, yeah, I saw it that in there. Finished, so. That was that was a nice yeah. job. Um, on, on the city layout, uh, as you're playing with that, bear in mind yeah. that it'll be a third person MMO. So we'll want to avoid things like that bridge at the top where you wouldn't be able to see under it. No, that, uh, go back. Where the two buildings bridge Here? bridge over the walkway. Yeah. Uh, no, this actually ends up uh, here. 
it, it doesn't go uh, all the way. Uh, and... you, you're, oh, okay, seeing, gotcha. you're seeing what's behind it there as being part gotcha, of that. Gotcha, gotcha. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, I really like the, yeah. the style. I noticed you have um, electrical wires running from everything, as in it all works on AC power. Yeah. I don't yeah, really feel like in the future we'll be using AC power. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, I didn't know how how you resolved that, so I put that there. But I, I, I would, I would see that from a practical standpoint. If they're building off a ship, that you would probably have like plasma conduit or something. If they're yeah. if they're using parts yeah. of the ship to power the city, um, and then you'd probably also just have. Uh, if they're out in the wilderness, crash, you're probably going to have no small amount of uh, uh, simple fire urns and stuff. Well, yeah. uh, one, one thing to consider, and you, we don't need to use it just because, uh, I mean, it, it might not uh, be as interesting to look at, but, I mean, in the, in the future, they're talking now, um, like, in the future that, that we should all see, uh, Actually, having um, power uh, that uh, that that is given off. I don't know if it's like waves or something. Anyway, it, it uh, like you don't have to pl you won't have to plug in. It's wireless. It, it's wireless. It's wi wireless power, basically. Yes, it's so. It's Nicholas Tesla design from over a hundred years ago was flawless, and we ruined it by putting power lines up. <laughs> but. but uh, but it looked well. Yeah, it was a little. Yeah, that that sounds but, that sounds like but, a Friday night <laughs> argument during a test. <laughs> um, yeah. But, oh, I get in arguments with teachers. But uh, but in, when I was in college, all the time, I, it, just, it was stupid. But I mean, an, another thing, kind of, uh, where I think, I think it, uh, initially it's going to be like. Um, uh, it's going to be like panels that that kind of radiate that off. I, you know, for lack of better words. But... I, I kind of understand what you mean, Wolf. Uh, the yeah. ideal city, um, considering what we have now in supercapacitors and graphene and uh, composites, what you can do is actually each central location needs to get that wireless energy, so it stores it there. And every I like say you've got your laptop or whatever device you need. It's almost it only takes about 13 seconds to charge in a graphene composite battery. So, it, like this is this is the future. You would take your uh, your battery pack, which is extremely light because it's a composite material, and you take it over there. You charge it for 20 seconds. You pull it off, and you go home, and that's enough to power your house for you know an entire week. So cool. I imagine that's kind of like what they would be seeing because we're going to be seeing something pretty close to that in the next 30 years. And on the game side, the added benefit of we don't have to model wires. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that true. is a huge modded, huge benefit. <laughs> and when you have your energy weapons, you walk into town after a tough day, you take all your batteries over, charge them up, you're good to go. It, anyway, oh, yeah, it's so, just a, you drop them down and they're instantly charged. The 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 point the main point is that we don't need the wires, although the wires add a, a certain uh, uh, style mm -hmm. to it. It's, uh, so uh, anyway, yeah, I, there there could be something to be said for thing. aesthetics to make to yeah. make it look yeah. grungy and cobbled together, but we'll see how it comes along. Right. I mean, it, it, you could, well, all, you could also have towers. We could also have towers that um, uh, some interesting towers that uh, we know are are uh, giving off that wireless energy. Yeah, which might be interesting to have you know them throughout the town or something. I'm thinking well, it would there would be like wireless towers that uh, send right. electricity between uh, major areas, like from one town to another. But between that, then in it would be, uh, it would just be wired out because uh, that actual that much energy transfer in the air is actually harmful to people. Well, like, 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, but uh, you you like the the towers themselves could be wired, but they give off wireless energy, like they could be wired mm -hmm. to a central energy power thing. But well, I guess the other question is, you know, how might that interact with the environment of an alien world? Maybe the Alethians don't like that kind of thing. Well, but... uh, if you do have uh, that wireless energy in there, if you have um... I'm not sure uh, how you planned on having um, the magic in the air, but I was thinking uh, the uh, what's the what's the material called? Silicon. Not carbon. Silicon. Yes. If you have silicon particles floating in the air, that would that would very much disrupt them. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think could... it was so much that it was airborne particles, though, because I don't think that would be very good for humans. No, and breathing silicon is would be bad. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> yeah, I think the idea was that it's just it's silicon-based life that the Alethians interact with okay. that gives them their abilities. So, you know, there's a life form that's embedded into their clothing that they've trained to act as armor or act as an energy barrier, that sort of thing. All right. Okay, so. So, as far as, as far as the magic goes, are we still going with uh, ice, fire, earth, and air? Uh, I, I I don't know about that. I mean, uh, that, I think I think that was more about. Um, I, I I think that was more about just giving us ideas. Ideas to um, to kind of inspire us to cre for uh, creating design, um, but oh, I guess, I like I there like is I an alternative. If you if you, want if you want to move, there is a a very excellent alternative based on another magic system, and uh, if I can I can bring it all together and explain it better next week. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I see. Um, you, you mean you mean like the the silicon, uh, the mm -hmm. yeah, life so forms being. No, yeah, I mean but... like the uh, the types of magic. Like say, uh, if you uh, kind of well, one of the ideas I had, if we if we were going for fire, ice, earth, and air, um, would be that if you're if this silicon life form is in the earth, it can't be everywhere. Like. There would be uh, obviously different biomes, and uh, they would have different powers in different portions of the Earth. And there'd be more power in this area and less power over there. And in some places of the Earth, there'd just be no silicon life to uh, use. Well, well so, the the thing it's it's the, the, there there are two different. Uh, Kinds there's there's the kind that um, that that they're not uh, they're not of any particular element or, or anything like that they they're the soul stones mm -hmm. which which they actually the Alethians actually that's um, that's fuse, the one that's fused yeah. together with them and then through through their their uh, bond with the soul stones that they can that is that bond they can communicate with with other um, uh, uh, silicon life Basics. that might be more um, geared. You like uh, certain ones yeah. might be more geared to to to. You mean use, certain species use, of silicon life yeah. forms, right? Might, might, yeah, might be better at um, at using uh, you know like uh, whatever kind of elemental you know, electrical <laughs> like. Uh, electricity, lightning, kind of uh, electrical, electrical, as as the professors like to call it. Um, but uh, but so like so they might they can have different um, like silicone enhancing um, things that they can they can um, either wear as jewelry or you know on their armor and weapons and stuff. Uh, that that help to enhance that uh, certain abilities. It basically, or originally, I actually, do remember that very clearly from 
Yeah, the, originally the idea was that the, the major silicone life forms were kind of like the massive uh, fungus life forms we have here on the planet. You know, like there's one out by Yellowstone that's like three states across underground. <laughs> And and the soul yeah, stones are essentially kind of nasty. <laughs> and the soul the soul stones <laughs> are there. byproducts of those. And that's what, essentially the soul stones are almost like a communication device between the Aletheans and these giant life forms that have the ability to manipulate energy. So it's it's almost a technology, but to a very it, metal technology kind of, kind of thing, it it appears very magical i i almost feel like, like it could be taken so far as that uh, there'd be like a collective intelligence between all of the organisms and the species yeah yeah they're that kind of like a mother earth yeah kind of um, yeah that's that's why uh like when we mine for stuff and just do as we please the Aletheans are just deeply offended by that because they don't command these they life, get upset. yeah, they yeah. they don't command these yeah. life forms to do these things to them. It's more of a symbiotic relationship where, essentially, they're asking for yeah. to perform this. So yeah, they so basically they, avatar. They find everything about us offensive, basically. <laughs> well, we're kind of we are kind of the same way. Away, my cat um, asked me to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to stay away from like a carbon copy of the concept behind Avatar, but yeah, but, yeah, like. I mean, that's the idea okay. is that it appears we are what we are, you know. <laughs> it appears on the surface that you know they're, for all intents and purposes, they're using magic, and whether that's elemental control mm -hmm. or creating a shield, it's just it's something that's being done through a manner that we don't understand. But it's not meant to suggest that the Aletheans themselves are our primitive people. They just have their own oh, no. way of doing things that they don't need the fancy guns and the armor and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and the magic as it was, as it is, does not have to be elemental based. I mean, you know, you, you could be talking about creating a plasma shield or or whatever we want to come up with. It, 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 the results could be very high tech versus high magic. But... Yeah. It could be, I don't know, maybe that elemental control is just the beginning. That's like their kindergarten. Yeah, the the, the whole um, seeming like Avatar thing, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of, it's una, unavoidable because we as a species really don't have a lot of respect for things that are different, you know? We, we and especially if we can't, I mean, just, just think, just think how we would, actually respond to like you know it's just silicone we we don't care you know it's like is it a light you know what you know just like an avatar there's is they're just trees you know it's like give me a break you know it's it's that's that's what we would yeah, do it, it's, it's very us. it's very difficult yeah no to just i, I said about that because of the of the mother thing which is a pretty big, uh, thing, big thing in that movie but i mean it's like we're going to i mean it's like we like people, some people are uh, upset that people mine areas and ruin the the aesthetic value and and maybe uh, poison the water or whatever. And but yet we still do it, you know. And we still just go, hey, you know, this we gotta get. So I, I can't imagine that we're not gonna do that on this other planet. We're gonna be mining and we're like, oh come on, you know, it's no big deal. Well, I don't know. There's actually one aspect of it that I haven't written up yet. I didn't think about it until just now, but if we have screwed our planet up to the point that we can't figure out what's wrong, we can't fix it, there's we no proof at that point it up, that it though. isn't our fault. What? No, what I'm saying is we can't prove that we didn't. Yeah, but we so don't... So why would we go off and do the exact same thing to some other place? Well, because we did I mean, we don't... We don't have uh, if we don't have um, evidence that we did something, so we just assume, uh, you know, it's something just happened. And it's not our fault. You know? Well, I, even even if uh, we, I don't even, answer that question. Even if we did things in a very uh, well, green way, for a lack of a better term, it, it's still human to just subject your surroundings to what you're doing. 
whereas that's, whereas that's the true. Alethians, you know, you know, we've talked about in terms of magic, like uh, Alethians don't mind; they don't build their own buildings. They use these life forms to manipulate matter and create them. So you know, they can essentially like grow stone and create buildings. And so when they see us, even if we're doing it in a very green fashion. It's still us just raping our surroundings to get what we want to them. Yeah, yeah. clear cutting and changing our landscape and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, the, this this uh, silicon crystallizes, right? When it when they re like uh, let's say an Alethian uh, uses a soul crystal to request a building of a house, it's not going to come up in a square shape. It's Going to come up crystallized, right? No. A silicon crystal. Yeah. Wait, well, the, you're they're... saying the house? Well, I, I mean, well, basically, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's not going to look like a human stick built home. Um, but, it, it, no, I mean, the, I'm not the, thinking, not like purple crystals or anything. I'm thinking like, you know, silicon dark crystal. Yeah, f fast. No, it, it doesn't. I mean, it's a. It doesn't have. It doesn't have to. I, 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 I always took it. To to be that's kind of a style like they 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 um, admire uh, the crystals they look at to to, mm -hmm. to that you know as as being a, a symbol of, of beauty so they purposely make their structures kind of resemble okay. that not that it has to you know I mean they can control it you know they can make it flat they can make it round they can do whatever um, but that's yeah that's yeah I mean there's there's an assumption that they can manipulate down to very fine detail right. um, whatever they want with that but um, you have to be careful uh, because story wise it could uh, I don't know how to explain it but uh, I mean, if a war starts, they pretty much make the the earth swallow you. <laughs> no, no, I mean, no, 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 no. You have They're to be careful with power. the level of power you. Yeah, I, I, you right. put in the story no, versus the gameplay. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's not a it's not a thing where they can do things on such a massive scale. And like, like creating a house for themselves is not something where they ask for it and then tomorrow they have a whole house. You know, there's a there's and a they, tremendous they, amount of energy to do that, and it takes it time. Yeah, it takes, oh, okay, okay. They, it takes days. They, they use yeah. they use they use a commu their community to build the house. You know, together like they. Yeah, so it, it's not themselves. just one person. Oh, okay. okay. No. Yeah. So yeah, one guy's not going to walk out in the okay. field and suck the atmosphere out of a square mile right. and just kill everybody instantly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Steve, um, I didn't I didn't think. Thing is, the um, the Alethians have their magic. What uh, we had previously discussed quite a ways back, that the humans would have nanotechnology. Is that still a thing? Yeah, that's that is still on the table. Yeah. It's, okay. It's still my so, do we have do we have nanotechnology that is uh, light enough that it can uh, propel itself in the air? Oh, we haven't really talked and, about it. Uh, we sense. haven't talked about that. Okay, that would be that would be somewhat uh, different from the Alethians because they can't have silicon in the air, but ours, our little na nanobots, they have an intelligence powered by artificial intelligence that keeps them from going inside our bodies or uh, floating in areas they're not allowed to be, and they they stay in a group. They do what they're told, and that's it. And then after that, then they just pack away into like this little pill bottle or whatever. What well, we had, we hadn't talked about that specifically, but we had talked a little bit about uh, the nanotechnology and the fact that most computer stuff has some silica base to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, since the uh, Alethian life forms that they work with are silicone based. Silica is one of the easiest things for them to manipulate. So we had looked at it from the other end of that that they could create havoc with computer systems and stuff like that. 
by essentially messing with the silicon parts in them. But at the end of the day, uh, we've been so focused the last few months on just getting a base framework going that really we can kind of go wherever we want. <laughs> That's... I mean, we, we have a very base um, story. The silicon, um, the, the silicon based interaction can also yeah. see that going both ways, too. Like, they can you mess could. with our silicon based tech, but somebody else on our end, on the human end, might figure out a way to do the same thing to them. Yeah, absolutely. Or we the, could send out little that nanotech that they inhale and it kills them. You know? Oh, that'd be. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what I'm thinking is that if the uh, if the nanotechnology is uh, is able to do very precise and very um, scripted things, that you can tell a computer to process mass amounts of information and it do it all at once. Um, but it's not able to do large scale projects like build a house. You can't get um, these little tiny robots to build a house. Whereas the Olympians, they would have extremely powerful uh, magic, but they can't sculpt a little tiny horse like we could have uh, ours do through nanotechnology because they, it would just take too much energy to process that much information. Oh, I see where you're going. It does lend a nice balance. <laughs> To sculpt a what? Yeah, that's... Oh, just uh, like a tiny sculpture of a horse or something. Oh, you mean like a microscope? Yeah. Or just like like yeah, one you'd sort of set like... on your desk. That the, the, the detail is so yeah. fine that basically the finer the detail, the more oh. massive amounts of energy you that's need to you control mean. to do that. And yeah, yeah. E yeah even exactly. if they could do so it, it, it wouldn't like, be worth uh, it for them to invest that kind of energy oh. for that. <laughs> Right, because they'd have to have like a whole circle of Olympians working on like this little tiny project, which I could understand. Like, say, one of the Olympians, uh, you know, veterans dies, and they make a sculpture of him out of uh, crystal. But um, that would be a very rare thing. Yeah, and and uh, one of the things that I was it would tend to, sorry go ahead and see. if they did things like that, they would tend to be to us like grossly oversized monuments. Like, you know, what, what What was that guy, the leader of the planet? Because yeah. the monument is yeah. 60 feet tall. It's like, well, no, that's that's just what, <laughs> exactly. that's just that's how perfect. it works for them, you know? Yeah. Mm. Like, no, he saved a kid once. He's right. nobody, but. Or or the, uh, the sculpture they make of the first person to discover that you can use the soul stones. First Olethian, sorry. Uh, do we call Olethian's persons? Yeah, whatever. As long as, long as we get the message across. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, one of the things that we have in the comic book is sort of like a holographic. Right. I was just um, about to say that. I, I, yeah, I, I did see I, the holographic projection. Yeah. Which and is I think, unfortunate because that's. Well, if we want to sell the idea that know. these guys aren't primitive, I think uh, that actually right. does a good job of it. Um, right. Oh, no, um, actually, it could be explained if some silicon uh, was, it's like some kind of silicon geyser at the area, and they just, it, that's where the heart of Aletheia is at. Like, the silicon really cares about that moment in history. Well, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I understand yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Well, it, it's kind of. I mean, uh, I don't. I don't think. The, I don't think the silicon is that in itself is that invested. It's just. It's not like. Um, it's. It's not that kind of symbiotic relationship. I mean, it's just that they have a, a symbiotic relationship, but it's not. They're not invested. It doesn't have in that the, level of intelligence. It, that's what you're saying. Well, uh, it, it, it's, it, or at least it's a different kind of intelligence, you know, it's not caring about history and stuff like that, but it, it, if, like, it, 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 it's not resistant to, to like, uh, say, you know, the Aletheian wanting them to 
to to do something it does something you know it's kind of you know it's it's not but so so they hey, it's kind of it's it's it, like they're they're telling they um they communicate with that alethian or not that alethian, that silicone crystal to to pr project that out and so it projects that out it, it's not it's not like it's just saying hey guys remember this <laughs> Well, but it, well, I mean, it could also be an instance of like he was saying, where you may have a fine detail statue, but it would be a rare thing because of the power it takes. Well, I mean, you you may create this uh, silicon silicon hologram or whatever, because I mean, this person is arguably the most important yeah. most important person in Alethian history. And was worthy of that investment of energy to create that. Well, it could also be a case where it's like it's not on all the time. It's something that you have to walk over, hit the whatever the equivalent of a switch is, and then it switches on that hologram for a bit for you to take a look at, and eventually it shuts off. But you stimulate the stimulate the crystal in some way. Essentially, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what, and then that way, you, like, like, the idea into, was that the crystals and cells and the interactions and all that, they have a certain amount of stamina, for lack of a better term. So if you want to avoid running that um, to the point of exhaustion, you can't have it on all the time. Right. It's wasting precious power. Yeah. Now, you, you could... You could probably feed in uh, power from another um, silicon crystal to that um, but uh, I, it, there again that's only like a battery it's, it's, something, yeah, they're, they're, so. it's something we can figure out along the way it's uh, I mean it's uh, at the end of the day it's a game and the closer we have to this right. is how it would really work the better but we, we can we can stretch here and there too. So we can. There's room to play. Yeah. I, I've yet to play a game that really falls under any sort of realism that's sci-fi based. So. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you, realism can be a, a huge trap too. It can it, it could ruin the game. You know, just by uh, you know you you always want to. Um, adhere to things that are going to be enjoyable and uh, not, you know, well, pain in the butt to to deal with. Yeah. It's like, oh, I wish we could do this, but that's not really that realistic. That, should, that shouldn't be, you know, too much of a concern. We should we should concern ourselves with what we want to do and then justify that with our imagination. <laughs> All right, getting back to it, Sergio, what what did you want to vote on for next week? Um, I wanted to, to see which one of the um, of the sketches you wanted to me to uh, I, I like that to one. A final stage because uh, this one yeah yeah I would I, okay. if you're gonna flesh one out I would like to see that one fleshed out personally speaking uh, I also did this one um, I was um, thinking more it's something like this area, but um, something you could flesh out to make a level or something like that. That does fit very well with the uh, desert idea for the first mobile level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you want, I can flesh out a boat. I'm sorry, flesh out a what? He says, it, uh, if you want, you can, both, you can flush uh, out both. Oh, both. If you, if you have time, the, that'd the be great. City. Yeah, I'm going to uh, to see which one uh, I can uh, make faster and start with that. And Well, uh, next class I will tell you which one I did <laughs> if, if I didn't have the time. But No, that, that works uh, fine, yeah, man. Because... That works fine. Are, are, are those white things, are those... Uh, Crystals? They're supposed to be actually a uh, bone. Bone. Uh, yeah, I don't mind if I don't uh, mind a few point... giant dead creatures. That's fine. right. No, no, that that's nice. Do, do, yeah. Do you think you could I... add add a little bit of crystals somewhere to it? Sure. To, to the the image. I mean, somewhere. 
Like yeah, uh, and... I, I I thought like in in one of my designs I had um uh, I had some that were kind of coming out of the rock a little bit. Okay. Yeah. No further with that. the idea. Was it further the idea of the the relationship between Crystal and Olympians by making it uh, just making it so that not the crystal the silicon crystals aren't covering the entire planet. They're only uh, in the areas where the Alethians have already expanded to. So they have helped the growth of uh, silicon because it helps them, so they help the silicon. Yeah, the symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, out in the desert, if they don't have some sort of settlement out there, you're not going to find anything. So you could actually send the humans out there and the, the Alethians wouldn't care if you went mining out in the desert. But, uh, of course, this is a... Well, they, they'd still be offended by the mining. Where they're, they're fighting. So... They'd be offended by the way we do things, yeah. but uh, it wouldn't be enough for war, not until the point when we go into one of their their, you know, their sacred areas and but, destroy their, yeah. their stuff. This, this level is... Uh, um, uh, it's people fighting Alethians and and they're fighting this isn't this is there's some reason why they both care about this desert area and so there's uh, they're obviously the, the, the Alethians are obviously invested in this area so um, maybe you know uh, they're being uh, well, that that could be uh, over a number of resources. Work, but it, so. yeah, n but yeah, it doesn't. They, they don't. I don't. I didn't envision crystals as being everywhere on the planet. But it's uh, anyway. Yeah. Oh, he's been sculpting too. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, not much. It's just something basic because uh, I didn't have that much time. But uh, oh yeah, not much. I'm sorry. That's basic. <laughs> <laughs> that's. That's yeah, great looking. It's just is a, this, um, oh, that's sculpture. Uh, this uh, I did it in Seabrush, but sculptures oh. take uh, take less time to do also. Wow, that's, this, that's coming so along nicely. Can you take, can you take a, a layer of skin and put it on top of the muscle so, uh, so, there's, so there's multiple layers, or is this the final layer? No, uh, this is actually the final layer. I normally okay. do this because the texture is actually the clay brush. It's not that uh, uh, I went for this. Uh, it's what it left. It's left uh, left off. Um, after I get the volume I need, I just smooth it. Ah, uh, that's awesome. That's why cool. I say it's pretty much basic. Wow, that's coming along really good. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure about the face. Uh, I think it, it's still... Uh, I'm seeing an orc. I don't know why. <laughs> um, it seems like what? An orc, orc yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The nose on Alethians is a little flatter and less pronounced. Well, but, but that's some Alethians. We've kind of We've we've uh, messed with it in different ways, so it's kind of hard to say for sure. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Uh, well. Sculptures is a pain. Yeah, I, I won't ask you to do it now. Just punch his face in. <laughs> <laughs> that looks good. Yeah. But yeah, that's coming along pretty good. It doesn't, uh, uh, Steve, what, uh, what you were saying, it doesn't have a, a bridge, this uh, pronoun? Uh, yeah, not so much. It's uh, like our, our, our yeah. nostrils basically oh. point straight down. Theirs point a little more out. Yeah, but that, that, that that's, but I mean, that's enough right there. I mean, that we've, we've kind of gone back and forth. On that, but it, I think I think maybe like was saying, uh, maybe the upper nose is might be more of an issue that maybe should be flatter. But but at like, any uh, rate, I mean, it, nothing is so desi so decided that you can't come to the table and go, well, this yeah. just looks really cool, and we won't probably 
just be like, yeah, that does. Let's do that. <laughs> I mean, we, we yeah. certainly didn't adhere to all that in the comic book. Oops. Well, and humans have... That was, that was getting closer to the idea of what we were doing there. This is a lot like the ZBrush. Yeah, it's ZBrush Lite. Uh, I mean, okay. that would yeah, be well. but it, you don't have that much control over it. Yeah, it, it won't do nearly the things that ZBrush will do, but that's why ZBrush bought them to get rid of the competition, and they let you play with this for free. It it seems to me like uh like um like above the nostrils, the the part of the nose, uh, it's like I guess the ridge and stuff. Ten, tends to be flatter than people's, but that is looking pretty flat, actually. Something along that line? Or... Yeah, I mean, it could be. It, do, it doesn't have to be. It can be like, like I, I thought more, I thought the way you had it was also fine. I think, I, I think they probably vary in what they have. Put it this way, Sergio. When when, yeah. when when you look at it and you don't think orc, it's probably right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, we're reaching the point where we need to wrap up class. Um, Josh, did you bring any artwork or anything, or just kind of catching up? Uh, I do. I have uh, some work, but it's not prepared. So. All right. Um, uh, I I'm actually more of an architect. Um, so, oh, good. You can do buildings and stuff. If you need, if you, I'm yeah. excellent with buildings. <laughs> Perfect. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, I do have all of the software. For. Uh, I have the Unity Pro uh, and all of the software required to do this stuff. So, I just need a little bit more training in it. Oh. Uh, Josh, do you have access to the Dropbox? I don't. Okay. And in fact, I was trying to work with the Dropbox this afternoon, and I finally figured out what my password was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Um, shoot. Well, if you can throw your email into BuzzNet, I'll send you an invite. Sure thing. And Josh, I also put mine on there. Some of the ideas that you were talking about, just just shoot me an email about those, so I don't lose them in my head. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone else that we need to add to the Dropbox folder? We already added Sergio. I, I think that'll have us good. Okay. Okay, that's it right there. Got it. Is it possible to change your uh, your 3D Buzz username? Because I have not used that in a long time. Uh, it's something that an administrator would have to do. Okay. Okay. Invite Thanks, us. Nelson. Uh, well, I mean, I guess you could PM me what you want it to be set to, and I can set it for you. Uh, that would be awesome. I'll do that later. So now we get to get used to another username. <laughs> That's all right. It's early. <laughs> all right. Well, um, Wolf, what are you going to work on? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll figure it out. All right. <laughs> um, I'll trust you. you. Yes, sir. Um. This one I uh, I will flesh out, but um, do you have any? I I couldn't uh, go to the entire Dropbox. Uh, do you have any um, document where you specify the cl uh, cl uh, classes or? Um, I, I don't think we do yet, do we? I mean, we've talked about it a little bit, but I don't think we've actually decided on the classes. It's it's mostly theory work right now. I think at this point, it's just uh, if you have an idea for a character, throw it in. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, the, the classes are going to be, you know, some. I seem to have lost the sound. Oh, that's not good. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. 
Oh, there we go. Let's say there we can go. hear you. Yeah. yeah, that was that was kind of weird for about uh, thirty seconds. All I heard was buzzing. Hey, basically, all we know for sure right now is the classes will have some sort of basis around, like a uh, healer, a tank, DPS. You know, kind of standard MMO class stuff with whatever variations we oh. want to do to it, but those variations have not been decided, so let let the artwork flow. The, oh, uh, okay. one, I have another question okay. before we go. Uh, how are we handling skill creep? <laughs> Uh, a lot of times, with, are, a yeah. lot of times with me just mentioning that we're a very small team and we need to be careful about how much we try to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a it's a pretty easily easy solution to this, and you just make uh, the weapons not need level. Like if you don't do leveling up, as far as like your health gets more and more, if you don't do that, you don't have skill creep. Yeah, I personally don't get, I, I really don't get the idea that just because you're level 50, you can handle 20,000 shots from a level 1 pistol. Right. I'm th I have the feeling that, like, if you are stabbed with a samurai sword, you should die, not yeah. stabbed 200 <laughs> times. <laughs> uh, the, the bane of almost all games. I've seen them. I've trained with them. I've, I've been nicked by them. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I, I've thankfully never been nicked yet, but but yeah, I, I've seen him go through a couple poles. Yeah. Oh yeah, it uh, it hurts when you're stabbed. <laughs> Quote of the day. <laughs> if, if we have like a section so. on the main menu for like different quotes from different people in history and all that kind of stuff, that has to be in there. There you go. It hurts when you get stabbed. <laughs> Uh, I, lo I love when these classes can be informative. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So, uh, Sergio will work on that, and uh, Josh, you've already and got some stuff. Steve, oh, I have so much stuff, too, and there is so much to talk about. I couldn't even fit it all in here. <laughs> I've just, I just been eager to talk, and I, I hate how I interrupt, but... Uh, you know, sometimes it's important. Yeah, that's all right. We'll just keep working through it week by week, and you'll add good stuff to it. No worries. All right. So, so um, let's see. Who was – I'm sorry. I'm not good with names yet, even though I watched all those videos. It still I, is not enough. I'm here, and I'm bad about it. Okay. Scott is, works with coding, right? Or he's interested in coding anyways. Yeah. Yeah, he just yeah. showed up tonight. And Nils – Nelson's like programming lead. NATO is design lead. Uh, Wolf also does uh, design, right? Oh, uh, Wolf's more I, just little... art side. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Other than just or, general or, discussion. I have you written down as concept art. Yeah. Um, Sergio, you also do art. Yep. And I love your landscaping, by the way. Thanks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Big J. I don't remember what you do. Is Nick still here? Uh, he okay. doesn't have his mic on today, so. Um, Nick. Okay. What? Okay, that's his. That's his name. Is yeah. Nick? Yep. Okay. Uh, what's his? What's his specialty? Uh, largely art. Hey, he, art. He okay. knows a little bit about the design side as far as stats and stuff, but mostly art. And he has had a lot okay. of personal projects moving towards work, so. so. And Richard's doing the storyline, right? I'm doing the human aspect of the storyline. Okay, other than that, who's doing the alien? That was. Yeah, that, that Ray. was Ray. That's. But Ray's AWOL. But Ray's AWOL. Yeah. But we have a large chunk of that story. And... Okay. And, uh, if you I, like I, Richard, I. I'd... I actually helped. I'd love to work uh, with you on that. I actually helped. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Wolf, Wolf helped Ray quite a with, bit. Okay. Like so, some oh, of that's... some of the some of the uh, stuff were my ideas, or I altered his, okay. his ideas, and then and then uh, gave ideas and of my own, and he altered them. We actually, uh, when we did work together, we actually worked really nicely. 
Uh, and so I, I said I was going to, um, I could help uh, 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 Richard. Is that yes. yeah. Rich? Yeah. Richard, right, yep. Uh, oh. And because uh, it, it's Lance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Trying to adjust. Oh, okay, so Lance is Richard. Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, if we, I, if you guys all have, have Skype, we there's no reason we can't get together. We can chat about that absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. We can do that at uh, some point. Uh, yeah, my my Skype is just the same as my uh, uh, email, by the way. Wolf Knightley. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so is mine. SJC twenty one twelve. Okay. Uh, Wolf, did you put yours in uh, the Buzznet? Uh. No, I'll, I could just e I'll just email you. That's that'd be perfect. Also, uh, Richard, could you send me an email also, and we'll just get together and do the thing. Sounds good. On the stories, I want to bring uh, both storylines together so that you have um, parallel timelines that match up in in history and the future. Yeah, like I've got um, I've got the point where some of the characters from Ray's storyline meet some of the characters from mine. Mm -hmm. But as far as how old they are, I never had a chance to discuss with Ray how that was going to work out. Because I know okay. that uh, part of the thing with the type of stone that that particular main character has is her life is significantly extended. So mm -hmm. that you know, it's, pretty much is a wide open area. I think, I think by like about it's like she lives to be like a thousand or something. But at least that's what wow. well, I, I don't know. I well, think if that's you're at uh, light speed travel, uh, if you're at light speed travel, you get you actually um, because of I forget who it was, what his Einstein. law was, Einstein's uh, Einstein's law. Einstein uh, yeah, relativity. You actually live a lot longer because you're traveling faster. So well, when you get there. You're not. You don't feel older. You didn't actually gain any experience, but the rest of the the universe has aged further than you. Right. Yeah. But, that's, but that's, your experience, if, if the trip, Sorry. if the, if the trip felt like five minutes for you, you're you're a five minutes older. You 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 just experience time differently. Mm -hmm. It's not. Right. It's not like. Yeah. But you just became like. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, pretty much a really old piece of history that's alive today. <laughs> sort yeah. of. Except I haven't you... I haven't really worried too much about the whole time dilation thing. That's why I've set up the jump gates is it allows mm -hmm. us to bypass that. Right. because um, that's just a a pain in the butt well, if you don't have all your friends traveling together. <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, actually... a lot of sci fi just ignores that and I think that's why it's... Well, I actually wrote a timeline that's kind of parallel to yours that does play nicely with that. Uh, with... My my timeline is mostly focused on the time in space because I've done a lot of research on that. What, so, what, what, what is what, your name again? I'm Joshua. Joshua. Uh, Lou Azriak. That's the. That's my. Yeah, which yeah. is going to change to Tazel. Everybody calls me Tazel. So, but just for tonight, it should be Lou Azric. Perfect. All right, guys, yeah. we've got to get it shut Sorry, down. I've confusing. got to uh, cut Nelson loose to work on his stuff. Um, sounds like everybody knows what they're working on for next week. Yeah, I'll keep working yeah. on the pistol and see about getting a low poly version set up once it's finished to put into the game scene. Awesome. We'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, I'm logged into Skype right now. So if we want to continue this after, we can. We can uh, I have to eat. I have to eat. You guys can't okay. decide. I, I have to go start. do other work. <laughs> All right. But yeah, we'll get. We... All right. Hey, Richard, I got your email. Um, just give me one second here. Which email do you want? Uh. Uh, actually, I I received your email. That's what I was saying. No, no, I I, I just I just sent you an email. If that's uh, okay. Okay. Oh no, I just got the Dropbox request. Uh, 
Lou under Lou twenty three s at Gmail. That sh uh, yeah. If you guys have emails, I can join you on Skype. All right. All right, guys. So thank you very. I think that's everything. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Very productive night again. Outstanding. And I will uh, see you guys next week or talk to you before. Oh, um, Nelson, are we are we yeah, planning on a Friday test this week? Probably not. Probably not. All right. In that case, uh, then that's how it stands. I'll either talk to you guys or see you in next Wednesday's class. All right. Good. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great Sounds night. Sounds great. See you. See you. All right. Okay. Hey, bye.